Insurance Information Institute's table from the American Pet Products Association's 2017 to 2018 National Pet Owners Survey concluded that 60.2 million U.S. households own a dog. I have two young kids having a dog in the house. I think, again, just teaches them responsibility, mm -hmm. teaches them how to love and care another animal, another human being. We got Peyton after my second cat had died because the house seemed very quiet. And then my dad thought that Peyton could use a friend and then we got Belle. It was more of an impulse buy for the second one. As stated in Psychology Today's June 7, 2009 article, they found that a person's blood pressure lowers, heart rate slows, breathing becomes more regular, and muscle tension relaxes, all of which are signs of reduced stress. It's interesting to note that these positive psychological effects work a lot faster than many drugs taken for stress. First of all, we need to make sure that we're ready for a dog. We need to make sure that we're ready for the responsibilities of it. Terriers are very high energy, so if you're a more couch potato stay at home type of person, then probably a terrier is not going to be the right fit then for you. It kind of forces us to get out of the house because when you got to walk them, which is super nice because then you get to visit neighbors and stuff. They're really cuddly too, so you get to sit on the couch with them after a very long day. They always make you smile when you walk through the door because they're all happy to see you like makes your day. They're just great companions. They really truly just want to make us happy. But the health benefits not only for the dog but for humans on having a pet. It keeps blood pressure down. For our older patients it keeps them active because you need to still get up and walk them and take care of them so it gives them a purpose to live as well. I think we want to be able to take care of something but in the same aspect they take care of us. They will be that one thing who will put their head on your leg when you're having a bad day. They can sense things that I think some humans Humans, we just don't quite understand, but yet the dog is going to know that something is going on. Dogs aren't just useful for cuddling up with after a long day. They actually hold a higher role. National Geographic's September 29, 2009 issue explains that therapy dogs pay informal social visits to people to boost their spirits, while others work in a more structured environment with trained professionals like physical therapists and social workers to help patients reach clinical goals such as increased mobility or improved memory. Most dogs are people pleasers. That's like the perfect situation, especially if you have a lab or a golden. Those dogs just thrive off of being around people. Probably the reason we stick more so with dogs is probably for allergies too. We have had little bitty poodles up to huge Great Danes. There's kind of two factions in this area. One is through the Humane Society and they do the reading with kids at the library and the schools. We would do hospitals and nursing homes and we go through obedience training. We have special training for IV poles, wheelchair, sudden movements, and maybe shaky hands. You went out and you were kind of observed in different situations, like getting in an elevator. You really have to work on the leave it command because in some hospitals, a pill's been dropped or there's something on the floor and you have to really be careful. It started out with my puppy buddy when my mom was in the hospital. She said one day that dogs came to visit her at the hospital and I'm like, are you kidding? I didn't know dogs could go to the hospital. So we started our training. Then we go in and we can put them on their bed and just kind of see the pain leave their face. Pet therapy is an emotional dog support, so the dogs that are trained for assistant dogs are not pet therapy dogs. A nurse started that back in 1976, actually in London. You notice that over in London, they will allow a patient to bring their own dog in. You start noticing that her, her patients were getting better just mm -hmm. having their own dogs, that whole emotional connection. I had breast cancer about four years ago, mm -hmm. and so this is our seventh golden retriever. I just knew that eventually I was going to give back and notice that in chemotherapy with kids they actually have pet therapy dogs but they don't have them for adults in this area. So I said I'll be back. Ooh. The idea was to, to get a puppy, raise him from scratch, which is what we've always done. I started training him since he was a puppy. So you just start out with basic obedience and, that's, mm -hmm. and then from there then there's going to be specifics beyond that. After that, then we start preparing for the actual test. He got his canine good citizenship, which is another certification. Mm -hmm. That's just so they are a good neighbor, they're not aggressive, and that they listen. Right after he was a year, we actually passed the TDI test. That TDI stands for Therapy Dogs International. So in our area, the two main organizations for therapy dogs is TDI and Rainbow. We went with TDI because they've been established for a very long time. We can go to schools, we can go to hospitals, we can go to funeral homes. I want to somehow give back and that's what you're doing. Yeah!
libraries, I think, should be looking for ways to provide stereotype library stuff. We should also be pushing into surprising new places. It's good scientific proof that it kind of lifts the spirits. So going into hospitals or going to places where people are, you could say, extreme situations, whether physical or mental. Especially students here in this community definitely have that intense, you could say, pressure. While dogs hold a family and therapeutic importance, cats are also important with their stress-relieving qualities. According to Insurance Information Institute, 47.1 million households in the United States own a cat, making them the second most commonly owned pet. He has a Balinese cat. Every time my family walks home through the door, Loki comes up and greets us. They slightly make you lazy because they just sleep all day. They're not like dogs, which make you more active. I have a 17 year old kitty right now. He is definitely a good stress reliever for you know busy days, long days. I have a 10 and 12 year old and sometimes they don't always listen. They're definitely fun to cuddle up with and they help you with stressful times during finals and big tests. But I think it prepares you for responsibility, somebody else depending on you. I would suggest someone get a cat if they are looking for a pet that is going to be affectionate. Someone that has a schedule that is conducive to having a pet that is independent. Our life is pretty busy, so we don't really have time to take out dogs. There's definitely some people that have mental challenges, whether that be depression, mental illness, kids that have special needs and Cats have made it a big difference in helping them either communicate or come out of their shell or get out of their depressive phase because I think sometimes cats, pets in general, can do stuff that people can't. Although you can't cuddle with a fish, there are significant benefits of owning or even being around this aquatic pet. If you walk into a waiting area of a clinic or hospital and see an aquarium, it isn't simply a part of the interior design. It is placed for a better purpose, a healthy distraction. Fish tanks are also shown to lower anxiety for patients. In a 2004 study, 42 patients who were referred for electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, were examined to monitor the effects of an aquarium on pretreatment anxiety, frustration, fear, and depression. It was found that participants reported anxiety levels reduced by 12% in the company of an aquarium. Dr. Barbara J. Andrioli of Wheaton Eye Clinic says that, quote, it's also a good nature break. Our office doesn't have many windows, so it's refreshing to see the liveliness of the tanks. Small mammals should not be forgotten as they hold important qualities. In a study at the University of Queensland in Australia, children from ages of 5 to 13, some of whom were kids with autism, were observed interacting with either toys or two classroom pet guinea pigs. It was found that when children with autism interacted with guinea pigs, they engaged in 55% more social behaviors. Obviously, there's a numerous amount of other household pets. However, yeah. surveys prove that cats, dogs, fish, and rodents tend to be the more popular choice. In Huffington Post's November 13, 2014 article, they include that pets help reduce the risk of allergies, encourage relationships, and improve self-esteem. Whether it's from reptiles, to mammals, or even aquatic pets, all pets improve the quality of our lives physically, socially, and emotionally.